Color grading is a skill and an art, and it takes years to get really good at it. But there are tools that'll get you 90% of the way there as an editor, but with way less effort. Hey, my name is Will, and I'm a videographer based in Toronto. I usually post videos about lighting and camera tests, but today I wanna to show you the plugin that I use to color correct and grade a lot of the creative tests that you might've seen on my channel. That plugin is Dehancer. This video is not sponsored by Dehancer. I can say whatever I want about this plugin. I am, however, an affiliate. So if you're interested in getting Dehancer, use the promo code below to get 10% off of your purchase, and it will help you and me out at the same time. Dehancer is known for for its ability to do really good film emulations quickly. But recently I've found myself using it for more than just that. The answer has been a great way for me to get a solid look out of my Sony FX3 while giving me more flexibility than a creative LUT, but at the same time being more uh, intuitive and flexible and easy to learn. This is especially helpful as a Premiere Pro user since I don't have all of the color correction and grading abilities that a program like DaVinci Resolve has. So having a plugin that can add film emulations, grain, halation, bloom, and more without having to round trip back and forth between DaVinci and Premiere has been really, really sweet. Here's a breakdown on how I use it for my YouTube videos. Here we are in Premiere Pro and I have a batch of clips here that I wanna color grade. So typically, if I'm not using Dehancer, I would just be applying a Rec. 709 LUT on an adjustment layer on top of all of my other clips. And then I go to those clips specifically and use Lumetri to add further correction like exposure corrections and temperature. Some things I'll do after the Rec. 709 LUT, like for example, vignetting, but using Dehancer is a little bit different in the sense that you don't have to add a LUT. So here's how Dehancer works. The first time you apply it, things are gonna look weird because it's gonna assume that you're working with a Rec. 709 file, which I'm not. I'm actually working with a log file from Sony. So I have to specify this, I have to choose camera and tell it that I'm shooting with the Sony FX3 in S-Log3, and that looks more correct. Instead of having to do all that, I just did this once and then saved this as a preset. So now whenever I search for the plugin anywhere, I can actually search for that specific preset. So after setting your basic camera settings, right away you have some basic controls that you can do right before going deep into the film emulations. So you have exposure control, and temperature tint and defringe. I expose a lot of my clips to the right of the histogram. So I'm gonna lower the exposure here a little bit so I get more of a closer look of what I would want. And then when I go into the film tab, now I can just circle through these looks and things will look really nice because I lowered the exposure. So first off, if you don't want any look applied, you could just disable this and essentially now you have a Rec. 709 LUT applied. So these are all of the film emulations that are there right now available. Usually I like to go up to the very top or bottom and then just start scrolling on my mouse. So one of the reasons why this looks really good right off the bat for me personally is because it comes with film grain already applied in the plugin. So if you want, you can disable that and at least it will give you a cleaner look of what this film emulation is doing. But adding the film grain in there can sometimes help give you a better idea of what things will look like in the end. But whenever I land on something I like, I also go into the specific clips still and do some basic corrections. Like for example, if I lower the highlights, it'll give me a lot of those uh, overexposed areas back. So let's see what that looks like. And then I can maybe up the shadows a little bit so that they're not completely clipping at zero. So something like that is a little nicer to my eyes because I try to keep the skies at around 80 or 90 on this scale. And if I don't like this and I change my mind, I can just go back to Dehancer and keep flipping through. And there's just so many different looks to pick from that sometimes I just don't know what to pick. But once I've decided on all of that stuff, then I can move on to some of the other things that I want. And most of the time, I don't go through every single one of these tabs. I just do what I need to do or what I want to do for my look, and that's it. So here are the main ones that I use almost all the time. Grain, yes, uh, but sometimes I kind of play around with the grain level. So for example, I'll lower it sometimes to ISO 50 so that I have finer grain. And then for halation, I like to turn that on. 
and it gives me that really nice re really nice look around the edges of people's faces it, it just makes it so much more i don't know organic and you can of course um, change the presets on this or you can go to custom and then you know just do your thing and then the other one that i might use sometimes but very sparingly is bloom and the reason i like this is because it gives me more motivation to not have to shoot with a pro mist all the time knowing that i can add this bloom in post just turning it on right away is already giving me a nice look what's really cool about this too is if you're willing to forego some of these effects if you've cooked up a look that you really like in Dehancer, you can always do an output to a LUT. You can export a LUT of the look that you just created, and now you can use that LUT everywhere without having to use the Dehancer plugin. Uh, but you will lose some things like the film grain, for example. And then I kind of just follow the same workflow. I go shot by shot. Usually I like to stay with the exact same film emulation but go into the individual clips and again, adjust what I need to adjust, you know, like recovering the blacks on this one for and after. Now I'll have a little bit more information here, maybe split the difference, maybe lower the highlights because I want to see a bit of outside and less of me. And there you go. I mean, it's just simple, simple corrections, but the overall look is made by Dehancer. And if I ever want to change the look, I can easily go back again and keep going through. So essentially Dehancer for me is just almost an unlimited LUT generator where I can easily flip through different film emulations that were used in actual movies, use those as starting points and then just go into the clips and then just change what you need. And that's how I use Dehancer. The one downside I kind of find with Dehancer is that it slows down render times quite a bit and playback is not really fun with it, uh, at least for me on Premiere Pro. However, I am on kind of an outdated GPU, uh, GTX 1070. But just to give you an idea on a 1070, a one minute sequence takes me about three minutes to render with Dehancer. Whereas if I just have a Rec 709 LUT on top of everything and a little bit of corrections here and there, it would take me about a minute to render with just Lumetri effects. So that's three times the render time, but again, with a GTX 1070. Dehancer also has an iOS app, which at first I wasn't really interested in because I thought I had to take pictures with my a7 IV all the time just for them to look good. Turns out Dehancer is really good at making overly digital and sharp photos look more organic. Here's a quick example. Took a photo of this lamp and plants setup. Looks kind of bland. I add a film emulation look and that's super grammy. Here's another shot of just me standing outside. Again, bland look. Looks overly digital, obviously, also because I shot it with a phone. But once you add a LUT, things look a little bit more natural and organic. And I really like the color science that Dehancer implements in a way that makes this look not like a phone image. It, it looks like this photo wasn't taken with a phone sensor. And it has a lot of the same features you'd find in the Adobe or DaVinci app. And it feels pretty intuitive flipping through the different edit tabs of the app. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Dehancer. 10% promo below. Just, uh, yeah. Take care.